folks, welcome to Barb Makes Things. Today I want to talk about my second hexachord, the single body one. Barb Makes Things! In my last video I talked about how I made my first hexachord. I'd set myself the deadline of Bay Area Maker Faire 2014. Deadlines are really, really helpful. When 2015 rolled around, I thought, okay, what am I gonna do for Maker Faire this year? I really enjoyed making my hexachord, so I wanted to try another variation on it. This time something smaller because I love my hexachord, but it is a pain to transport because it's three feet tall. At first I thought mostly the same thing, but smaller. I even tested out a mini sound chamber like the original hexachords. Isn't it cute? But this does not make a lot of sound. So I opted for 12 strings again, six necks again, but this time a single sound chamber. The whole of it is smaller, but the sound chamber is bigger than the original ones. I also wanted to be able to have more control over the performance, so I designed it to have servos mounted over all the sets of strings and control them with an Arduino. Last time I did a whole bunch of sketches. This time I did most of my plans in Illustrator. I'd learned from the first one that getting the walls of the sound chambers in just the right place was really difficult. And those were simpler than the one I was planning. Add to this that most string instruments have some kind of interior structure, so I made my own. These supports were cut out on the scroll saw, glued into stacks, and then sanded uniform on a belt sander. I cut the sides and face from the same 1 8 inch plywood I used for my other hex cord, and then tested the limits of mine and Crash Space's clamp collection. These spring clamps were only a dollar, so I stocked up. Clamping these curved pieces wound up being pretty tricky because they like to slide while the glue was setting. But I finally got there. As tricky as that was, putting this chamber together would have been nearly impossible without those inner structure pieces I'd made. This is just one example of unglamorous prep work making things easier. I should do a video about that. Hex cord, right. So outer frame, done, sanded, party. Then I went over to Rediscover Center and used every clamp we had at the time to glue the face on. I'm not sure why I drilled the sound holes after I glued it, but I did. Worked fine. Next, the necks, which I made from mahogany. As with the inner supports, I wanted them to be wider than most of the lumber I had, so I doubled them up again. After they're sanded down, you can barely tell they're made from two parts. It's mostly the grain that gives it away but I like the look. I drilled holes in those for the tuning pegs. You see those supports on the inside where the necks attach? I wanted a bit more strength on these considering there would be string tension pulling on them. So they're both glued and screwed. I frequently build with screws, but there's very little hardware in these instruments. You might've noticed a hole at the center. That's not a sound hole. After a lot of diagrams, I decided to mount the servos in the center and have the wires run through there to the back. Basically, I designed this instrument as a big hexagonal donut. So I needed an inner wall too. More supports. These walls took a lot of sanding and fiddling to get them to fit, but when they did, they barely needed gluing. It was such a secure fit. The centerpiece was glued on with a highly sophisticated clamping system, and the chamber was done. I originally planned to add a back, but as I was putting it together, I realized that it really didn't need it. This was going to produce sound quite well without it. Now, for the details on the front. I used Crash Space's CNC machine to mill bridges that would be just the right size, and then 3D printed the saddle nut. They turned out great, and fit closely but nicely on the instrument's face. Having vector diagrams of your plans? Next, I made a hexagonal mount to go into the center. I milled some spots into the back of this for the servos so they could hang out in just the right spot over the end of the strings. And on the back, I mounted an Arduino Uno and a motor shield. The servos each got their own picks, and with a little code, it was ready to go. Here it is at Maker Faire. It sounds really neat, especially when it's playing along with the big hexachord. Since I've made it, the servo mount is cracked, so I'm working on a new one. I hope to share that with you soon, along with better footage of this thing in action. Stay tuned. If you like this, share it with a friend. If not, share it with an enemy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Make sure to take a look at some of my other builds and how to's. There are a lot of them. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you click the little bell, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. 
If you'd like to get videos a little early and support my channel, you can visit my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.